thank you very much for showing interest in the subject of flushing. We hear this term a lot, flush your orchids, I'm flushing my orchids once a month. But in this video, I want to talk about it. Why do we do it? How do we do it? How often should we do it? What could happen if we don't do it? And all of this applies to organic and inorganic media, the orchids growing in the pot or orchids growing on a mount. And while I talk about all this, filling in the blanks, keeping us company is Dendrobium nafrit alex poli and Tolumnia red devil in the background. So seeing as all our orchids are getting fertilized, with every application, there's a likely possibility that not all nutrients will find their way into the plant's roots. Inorganic and synthetic fertilizer sources commonly marketed often exist in the form of mineral salt ions. As a result, the nutrients that are not taken into the plant via the roots can remain in the media in salt form and slowly build up over time. So salt buildup can happen for several reasons. Excessive application rates, imbalanced nutrient ratios, rigorous fertilizing schedules, and the evaporation rate is faster than nutrient absorption, which can happen when we grow our orchids on mounts. As fertilizer salts build up over time, they eventually cause unwanted problems, such as nutrient lockout, and worst case scenario, the orchid can die. It is beneficial, if not imperative, to flush or leach the media and mounted orchids to clear out any fertilizer buildup, giving our orchids a clean slate to grow. Flushing can be done in several ways. We can submerge the pot in clean water and let it soak for 30 minutes, then drain and flush through again, using two times the volume of the size of the pot with plain water. When I speak of plain water, I mean the cleanest, lowest PPM that you can have in your water. Use that for flushing. You can also flush through the pot using two volumes of the size of the pot and let it drain out abundantly flushing, as in pouring through fast. You can soak mounts in clean water or you can spray with plain, clean water. Also, if you have the benefit of rain, use it to your advantage. If you have warm temperatures and it is raining, expose the roots to that gorgeous supply of water, even if it rains for hours. As long as the temperatures are favorable, anything from 18 degrees and up, orchids can be flushed for hours when left in the rain. Just a quick side note, as it would be in my climate, if it hasn't rained for an extended period of time, a month or so, accumulations of debris in the air can flush into your pots. But if the rain is consistent, eventually those particles will flush out as well. I did a video about acid rain, which I will link and put a card up. So if you're interested about acid rain and what to do if that were the case in your climate, have a look at that video. Because it can happen, it is not often, but it can happen. And in that video, I explain what you can do if it were to have rained acid rain. The amount of water needed for a proper flush and how often it should be done depends on a couple of factors. The type of growing medium used and secondly, the frequency or amount of fertilization applied. Mediums such as perlite and lecca, as an example, substrates that do not hold on to water and nutrients well, will require less water to successfully flush out excess salts than bark, sphagnum moss, or cocoa husk would. When to flush is a little harder to determine, but for orchids that are on a heavy fertilizer regime, example, they get fertilized at least once a week. It is a good idea to preemptively flush once a month before any unwanted damage caused by excess salts remaining in the root zone can occur. Now you can check to see if the salts have been removed from your pot. First of all, measure the parts per million of the water that you are going to flush your pot with. And you take that number. You can flush the pot then, catch the run of water, and measure the parts per million that have accumulated after the first flush. The second generous flush will reduce the value of the parts per million considerably. If your parts per million levels at first are not excessive, your pots are in a healthy ratio and your fertilizing quantity are spot on for the climate of the pot. In some cases, 
you can risk going a little bit higher with the fertilizer to see if the orchid will perform better with bigger growths. But mainly, if your parts per million levels are low after your first flush, you've got the fertilizer ratio and the needs of the orchid dialed in. But if your parts per million levels at the first runoff are high, as in 500 parts per million and higher, then you can now relax because they won't be any more after you have flushed. That is also an indicator that maybe your orchid isn't in need of such high fertilized quantities that you are applying. And you can also see in the subsequent fertilizing whether you need to reduce your fertilizer levels and then repeat the procedure about your parts per million, measuring them on the first flush and see if the conditions have improved. This is the thing, plants can readily use mineral nutrients that are in form of soluble mineral salt ions. The roots of the plants naturally contain different levels of mineral ions called root salts that help create a stable natural flow of water and nutrients into the plant's vascular system. If the amount of fertilizer salts added to the media is more than what the plant needs and can use, the plant will be affected. And as the salts accumulate, they can start to disrupt the flow of water and elemental nutrients entering into the roots. And if the salts reach the point of excess, they can actually begin to draw water out of the plant and back into the media. That is why when you do measure how your PPM levels are when you have flushed, your indicator is the parts per million. And to avoid any adverse effect of over fertilizing, when you see your first flush come out with a high parts per million ratio, you can reduce the amount of fertilizer on the next application. This way, balancing out any excesses for the next go around. The bonus benefit of flushing, which doesn't just target the removal of salts, is that flushing pulls fresh oxygen through the root zone by form of gravity and by way of the oxygen in water. And as we all know, Roots love oxygen, so flush at your heart's content. There is no such thing as over flushing. Know that when you flush, their roots are having a party in the pot. So all this time, with regards to flushing, my Dendrobium Nafitz Alex Poli has been in the soak method of flushing. And my parts per million in the water were at 11 to begin with. We are now gonna take her out and I'm going to measure the parts per million that is left in the pot prior to giving her a double flush of water to clear out any salts that have dislodged during the soaking process. I like what I'm seeing. 64 parts per million. The climate of the pot is perfect. Even though she is being fertilized because of her blooms, etc. The fact that I've been flushing, this is what I have in my pot after 30 minutes of soaking. If I now were to have 500 plus, I have the two options I mentioned earlier. I could reduce my fertilizer for the following months because then she wouldn't be absorbing all the fertilizer I'm putting into the pot. But seeing as this is my parts per million after 30 minutes, the climate of my pot is perfectly dialed in. Great news. So if I were to deduct the 11 parts per million that my water has in it from the 64 we've just measured, the remainder of the parts per million in this pot were at 53 parts per million. Ideal, no complaints. I will be pouring a second jug of water through this pot but in the meantime, I hope that this video was of help to you as to why we do what we do, why we talk about flushing and all that good stuff. The health of our orchids also is dependent on the health of the climate in the pot. If you have any questions with regards to anything I spoke about today, please address those in the comments. I'd be very, very happy to elaborate. In the meantime, thank you for your time. Thank you so much for watching. And I wish you a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.